Okay, so again, I'd like to welcome you and um, invite you to enjoy this um, website usability um, information from Rachel McWilliams. Go ahead, Rachel. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I could not hear you for some reason. I did not have my speakers turned up, so. Are you hearing sorry okay that. now? All right. How are you guys doing today? Such nice weather out here <laughs> that we're having. Um, it's really great. So uh, thank you guys so much for, for coming and for listening to me speak. Um, I'm going to talk uh, about um, website usability testing and um, some testing that we did here at North Carolina Wesleyan about two years ago almost. Um, and um, how it was pretty painless, but um, there's still some, some kinks to it that we need to work out, but um, I will go ahead and get started. And um, we'll have questions at the end and all that. So, all right, let me get here. Beautiful. Okay, so um, I have been here at Wesleyan um, since 2012. And before um, I was here in 2008, uh, they did a website usability test um, that was performed by an outside consultant. And this was primarily performed because um, they were, um, had been funded, uh, a grant had been funded by LSTA to develop a technology plan. So they decided to, uh, as part of that, have an outside consultant come in and look at the website. Uh, Around 2010, the college changed to a new website design. Um, I came in 2012, like I said. And then in 2015, uh, the library applied and was accepted for another LSTA grant um, where we have developed a five-year plan for the library. And as part of uh, working on that plan, um, I was asked by the director to uh, conduct another usability, website usability study of the library's website. Um, part of my responsibility is to maintain and enhance the library website. Um, and we are really lucky in that we have a lot of control over our website. So um, we can make at least small changes as needed. If it was a big overhaul change, we have to work with a webmaster, but she was really great and uh, it really uh, went very smoothly. So that was uh, a really easy step. Um, for usability testing, uh, there are a lot of different types of testing. Um, in 2008, they used what they call the treasure hunt usability test. What they do is just the uh, have a bunch of questions and they ask you to find things on the website, whether it be a book or um, an article or whatever. So uh, we talked about it as a staff and we decided that that would be um, the best type of uh, test for us to do. So um, we, I sort of uh, looked at what they did in 2008 and enhanced it more. Of course, it was seven years later, so technology um, has changed a whole lot in those seven years. Um, and being new to the whole idea of website usability, um, as a librarian, of course, I did some research um, and used uh, the report that was done in 2008 as sort of a guide, a basic guide. Um, there are a lot of other types of um, usability testing. Uh, some of them are listed there. There's the longitudinal method. I have a feeling that's a, a big, long process. Um, the remote asynchronous is for um, off-campus access. Um, heat mapping sounds very interesting to me. It's where you sort of see where people click on certain parts of your website. Uh, and there's card sorting, first click, and think aloud. And then there's a bunch more. But um, we decided to just use the treasure hunt for this one. All right. So recruiting participant, participants, I'm sorry, one of the really toughest parts of the process was recruiting students. And we just particularly looked at students. 
Um, we have uh, an interesting campus dynamic here where we have traditional 18 to 22 year old students, but we also have a large adult population and they call it Aspire here. Um, so we wanted to get a range of the traditional students and the adult students. Um, to get people to, especially students to participate um, in any library activity is really hard. Um, one of the things that we did not do that uh, I would probably do differently if we do this again, uh, we did not offer any kind of incentive. We just kind of asked them nicely, would you please do this? It's not going to take a long, um, a lot of your time. Um, and for the most part, students were, you know, put off. So um, not offering incentive probably limited us a lot. Um, we did, uh, however, end up with seven students that uh, were participating in the testing. We had three traditional students, two Aspire. One was a library work study student who's also uh, a traditional student. And unfortunately, as I was setting up times to uh, do the testing, one of the students didn't, never showed up and never got back to me. So technically, we ended up with six participants, um, which, was good and not good, but um, I'll get to that in a minute, so. All right. Um, as far as the questions go, um, we uh, did use, we looked at the questions from 2008, but we also updated a lot of them because we had special things uh, that we had created, including uh, online video tutorials, um, and also, we um, one of the big things we do here at the library is help people cite stuff. So we had wanted to make sure they knew how to get to our citation information. Uh, that was really important. Um, the questions really dealt with just getting around the library website. I just wanted to know how they got around the website, and uh, especially about the usability of other parts of the website, like the catalog and our LibGuide pages. Um, the catalog, uh, you know, is, is an entity in itself. The LibGuide pages are an entity in itself, but they link off of the website. So I wanted to make sure that students especially could get to the LibGuide pages. That's where uh, a lot of our database and other resources are housed. So I want to make sure they could get there as well. We did also ask some opinion questions, and I'll get to those um, the questions specifically in a little bit. Okay, so once I sat down with each student and we sat down um, together, we were in a room with a computer um, and it was just the two of us. So um, I just started off by asking them uh, some demographic questions, how long they had been in the school at NCWC because um, although we do have the classes of freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, sometimes students um, as a lot of us probably know, um, either are, could be like second semester sophomores or they've been at Wesleyan for three years, but they're only a sophomore or whatever. So I wanted to know uh, how long they had been at the school. And then uh, what their previous experience was with the website and the catalog, if they had even looked at it before, if they had done any searching, if um, they were familiar with it. Um, I also wanted to observe how they accessed the library's website. Um, there are quite a few different ways that you can access the library's website, especially at that time. Uh, there was at least three or four different places you could access it from, and most of them um, accessed it from where I would usually think that they would. So, um, In total, I had 11 questions that were asked as part of the testing. Um, what I did is collected the data, so I would ask the question and just let them go to it and then observe what they did. Um, the first eight questions were, were really navigational. Um, I need to find this kind of book, or this book, where can I find it? Things like this. An example is um, where would you go to find a scholarly peer-reviewed article about post-traumatic stress disorder? Um, 
that was one of the examples of the questions. And if you would like to know the questions we asked, um, my contact information will be on the last slide here. Um, and you can uh, contact me and I'll send you that information. And the slides will be available after the conference as well. So um, the interesting thing about the testing is um, if they did get sort of off track or didn't know where something was, I really was excited to use it as a teaching moment, sort of. Um, after they, you know, I didn't want them to struggle a whole lot and just sit there and be like, okay, I can't find it, you know. I would usually try and show them where the particular things were, and I think, and I hope that was helpful to them, that was really helpful to me to see um, where they struggled and where our other students might struggle. So that was really one of the helpful things about just actually sitting there one-on-one -on -one with the student. Um, and I hope they were able to learn some stuff. I certainly was able to learn quite a bit of stuff. All right. Um, a few observations about um, the testing itself. There were a few questions that stumped um, everybody and all six participants. Um, one of the questions uh, talks about trying to find a particular magazine title and none of them were able to find it. We have um, a product that's called Journal Finder um, and I think probably part of it was confusing um, and I think still sometimes it can be confusing to students because it's called Journal Finder not called magazine finder, not called newspaper finder. So I think maybe they just think it's a journal uh, finder and not any other type of resources. So um, I will show you what we did to hopefully sort of fix that situation in a, a little bit. So uh, the other question dealt with um, trying to um, find information on our website about uh, we check out a lot of popular DVDs, so I wanted to see if they could find information about um, how many DVDs you can check out at a time and for how long. And we have that, do have that information on our website, did at that time as well. And um, that was also another stumper. So but we get that question a lot at the CERC desk. Um, so uh, we thought that was a good question to ask. Um, and I did, uh, after the fact, show them uh, about Journal Finder and about finding the DVDs. Um, another observation I made, and um, you may um, understand this one as well, when students see a search box, they think it's like Google automatically. I still get this to this day. Um, and we had a catalog search box on our main page that just searched the library catalog, nothing else. And for uh, at least one of the people, um, they just entered stuff in the search box practically every time. Um, and uh, I'll talk a little bit about um, some um, about that in a minute as well. So, but that was interesting to me. Um, we keep, like I said, a lot of our LibGuide information, or I'm sorry, a lot of our resource information on LibGuides. Um, and the students very much liked the LibGuides. Um, they thought they were really easy to use. Um, it's a really good place, a really good thing just to keep all resources, especially subject resources, in one place. And we try to separate our databases by subject, and the students really enjoy that, especially if they're looking for articles for a particular class, like criminal justice or psychology or whatever. They really, um, really like that. And the last thing that I observed is they really do appreciate our help. I had uh, at least two or three of them say that uh, time and time again. They really appreciate, um, we have a reference desk here and we get questions. We get quite a few questions actually still. And they really appreciate our help. And that to me as a librarian was awesome. <laughs> um, and it made me really happy to know that um, we sometimes, even though we may not feel like it, students really do appreciate us. Um, so that was a great observation for me. Um, some interesting comments that I got, and these are 
um, direct quotes from what I wrote down. So one of them says, if I cannot find information in a database, I will usually go to Google. It is sometimes easier to find information that way, and that made me very sad. <laughs> um, I, I understand, I use Google myself to find things, um, but uh, usually when I sit with a student or I teach a class, um, I really tell students that um, Google is easy, but the stuff that you're finding in Google, uh, you just never know. The stuff that you use at the library um, is always credible and always um, good information. Um, and that's what your professors want. So um, that's, it was important, definitely. Um, the second comment was about the search box, like I said. Uh, one of the participants thought the search box was for everything. Uh, we do not, at that time, we didn't have a discovery service. We still don't have a discovery service. We're kind of in the process of looking. And um, he just commented that, you know, it would be easier to have one search box for all the library resources. I don't know how much of you, how many of you all get that, but um, we are in the process of looking at discovery services. So hopefully um, the whole Google thing maybe with, will be helped more with the discovery service, but we'll see. The last one was um, really made me smile too. Um, the navigation is useful and so is the website and quickly find information. And I appreciate the help of the library staff with my questions. Library has the resources that I need for my schoolwork. I mean, that is pretty much why we do what we do. So that one really made me happy. But um, a lot of what they commented about um, was really useful to us and did help us to make um, some changes to the library's website. All right. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna talk just briefly about some of the changes that we made. Um, this was the library's website when we did the testing. Um, it has changed dramatically since then. It's looks completely different now, but um, this is the way it looked. Um, it really, um, the testing, like I said, kind of opened our eyes to some areas that were problems, um, especially on this very main first page. Um, so as part of the testing, we um, made some changes. First change we made was to take that box for library hours and remove it. We shifted the tabbed box to the left and we moved the NC Live uh, widget to the right side of the tabbed box. And the next slide will show you what it uh, looks like, look like after that. If I can get my cursor here. There you go. So it sort of um, made the page a little bit more compact. Um, they didn't have to scroll. There was a little bit of scrolling involved getting to the NC Nose uh, widget, which is our, um, our chat. Um, some other changes were made also to the tabbed portion there in the middle. Um, we did um, kind of compact that as well. We had had a link there for eBooks. Uh, we took the link off. Um, and we darkened the tabs a little bit more because uh, beforehand they were sort of a little bit lighter and people couldn't actually read. Um, some people couldn't read the words in each tab. Um, for the articles tab, it used to say articles plus. We changed that and just made it articles. Um, and then we also added, made the, the search box for the catalog kind of uh, a little bit bigger and added that um, little arrow underneath it and the fine books, DVDs, ebooks, and more under that. Um, and then kept the links there as well. All right. Um, another change uh, under the articles tab, um, we uh, took a lot of that information out um, under online databases and moved just 
moved it up to just have the electronic resource by subject drop down menu there. Um, journal finder was the thing that um, students were confused by. So instead of calling it journal finder, we decided to, to change the name to journals A to Z and then have that text underneath it that said you can find specific journals, magazines, and newspapers by title. Um, just because we have that there though, it still doesn't mean that, um, that the students uh, understand that, but um, I think it did help actually pretty well. So, all right. So um, some lessons that we learned and some ideas for future testing. So um, probably we'll do some testing hopefully in the fall of this year. Um, things are kind of crazy this semester. We're looking for uh, a new library director and uh, we have some new staff and so um, we haven't really had time to sit down and do that this semester. So I'm hoping in the fall we'll be able to do it. Um, I think if we offer at least some kind of incentive, we'll get more participants. Um, I would personally like to uh, have at least probably 10 or 11, maybe 15 participants. Um, we don't need to get like a huge amount, but um, I think uh, if we offer some kind of incentive, um, food is always good. Uh, maybe a little $5 gift card, something like that. Um, if we have a lot of participants though, probably just some food and drink and usually uh, students are, are, uh, are pretty excited for free food. So, <laughs> um, and um, one of the things I really learned too is the library is very important because of off-campus sites and online students. We uh, at Westland have about nine, eight or nine off-campus sites. Um, and so, um, as I put down at the bottom of the slide, uh, one of the things I would like to do if we do testing again, hopefully in the fall, is reach out to those off-campus sites. Um, we have off-campus sites all over Eastern North Carolina. Um, so I think if we could get at least one or two students off campus, um, we would probably use maybe a different kind of method of testing for them. Um, that's also a possibility. Although I, I did like the treasure hunt. I thought it was um, a very useful. Another thing um, I think we should do probably is reach out to more faculty and staff. Faculty um, are sometimes the students first line to the library. Um, before we even get there to their class. So um, if we can reach out to more faculty and staff, maybe we could get a couple of them to uh, do some testing. And uh, I'm sure they have, would have great ideas. Usually they have pretty good ideas. The other thing um, that I didn't deal with before was the whole um, accessibility um, of our website and LibGuides. Uh, I know there are ways of looking at your accessibility. Um, we do have at least one student I know on campus this semester who is vision impaired. Um, and I don't know how much he looks at the website, but I just want to make sure that our website is completely 100% accessible to everybody, all students at all sites. Um, and if it's not, then we definitely need to work on that. And also the process as a whole has really broadened um, my knowledge about websites and the library's web presence and how really important it is. Um, and my interest um, has really been piqued as well. So um, unfortunately, uh, I have a lot of other job duties besides um, the website to do collection development and handle all the electronic resources. So sometimes this could put this gets pushed to the side, but um, I would really like to um, do more as far as the website goes. And um, hopefully we'll get to some of this stuff, uh, like I said, in the fall. So. All right, moving forward. Um, since um, we did the testing in 2015, NCWC now has a brand new college website. It just went live in October of last year. Um, it is still a work in progress. Um, 
it didn't go super smoothly. Um, but we have, um, like I said, we have a lot of access to um, fixing things on our website. Um, and I think that's really helpful and been helpful for us. Um, one of the other things that I would be interested about um, right now, a lot of our um, pages off of our main page are LibGuides. Um, and I don't know how um, students look at that, if they pay any attention, if it, because it looks different than the main page, if that plays any kind of, um, makes any kind of difference. Um, maybe it's just me, I don't know. But um, I would be interested to see what, um, if we do new, if we do testing in the fall, to see what students um, and faculty and staff and off-campus students um, think about um, the LibGuys as an actual web page and not just a page for resources and things like that. So, okay, um, just a few tips. Um, as my title suggests, um, website usability testing can be very painless. Um, I was actually um, sort of dreading doing this process um, because I thought it was going to take a lot of time and effort, and it did take a little bit of time and a little bit of effort, but um, really, um, like I said there, it's, it was really enjoyable for me. Um, it depends on you, I guess, if you enjoy websites, if you enjoy technology, if you enjoy getting to know the students. Um, if you don't, it might be uh, a horrible process, but I really enjoyed it. Um, we have a couple of new staff um, that have come in since I did the testing before, and I have a feeling that they would also um, really like to be involved as well. So I'm hoping we can do that. Um, and I really think even a small test usability study like we did here can really help improve some part of your library's web presence. Um, we learned a lot about, I mean, I learned a lot about um, what students think, thought about the main website, the catalog, things like that. A lot of what I shared here, um, and it was just really fascinating to me. So uh, I think any little thing that you can do to improve um, what you do every day can be um, really helpful. And the last thing there is getting buy-in from your library staff and your webmaster or your IT staff or whatever is really important. Um, like I said, we are really lucky in that we have a lot of control over our website. We fought for that very hard um, because um, libraries and library information is constantly changing. And uh, because our webmaster has to deal with the whole college, uh, we wanted to be able to change things with, ooh, I went too fast, sorry. When they're needed and um, it's, the IT staff here and the webmaster here have been really um, helpful and sat down with some of the staff here and just walked us through the process of um, changing things to the website and it was really really helpful so if you can get that that's great if you run your own even better so uh, let me get down here okay so that is uh, my presentation I'm going to stop sharing my screen does anybody have any questions Thanks so much, Rachel. If anyone have a, has any questions, please type them in the chat box. That would be wonderful. Well, while you are thinking about your questions to ask Rachel, I'm going to post a link to our evaluation 
Um, this is an evaluation of the entire virtual conference um, for today, and it will also have an opportunity to provide Rachel feedback on her um, presentation. So if you're joining us for more sessions later today, if you would fill this out at the end of the day and give us some feedback, that would be great. And uh, we'll give a few more minutes if anybody's still thinking about questions and, and wants to ask about Rachel's experience with uh, website usability. Well, if nobody else has any questions, I just want to thank you guys very much. Um, like I said, uh, my contact information is on the slides. I will send them to um, the conference um, committee and uh, get them uh, up on the website. And if you do, I also wrote a report that talks a little bit more in depth about um, what um, I guess about the questions and um, it's not an article but it's just a report about what um, what I observe and things like that um, I can send that to you as well so okay wonderful thanks so much Rachel we really appreciate it Thank and you. Uh, we look forward to seeing everyone hopefully at a one o'clock session after you've had a nice break for lunch and uh, hope to see you later thanks Rachel Thank you.